the Crown Prince of Jordan, presides over a graduation ceremony in Muta. The King and the Queen of the Belgians host a dinner in Brussels. The Royal Family of Denmark celebrate the 175th anniversary of the Danish Constitution in Copenhagen. And the British Royal Family attend a national commemorative event in Portsmouth. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Hello, everyone. I hope you all are doing well today. If you're new to my channel, my name is Alexandra, and welcome to your Royal Daily News for Wednesday, June 5th, 2024. In Portsmouth, Their Majesties King Charles III and Queen Camilla of the United Kingdom and His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales attended a national commemorative event on the occasion of the 80th anniversary of the eve of the D-Day landings in Normandy, France. According to Buckingham Palace, the event, hosted by the Ministry of Defense on South Sea Common, featured, quote, stories by some of the individuals involved in the largest seaborne invasion in military history, end quote. During today's commemorative event, the king gave a speech, stating, quote, Today, we come together to honor those nearly 160,000 British, Commonwealth, and Allied troops who, on the 5th of June, 1944, assembled here and along those shores to embark on the mission which would strike that blow for freedom and be recorded as the greatest amphibious operation in history. The stories of courage, resilience, and solidarity, which we have heard today and throughout our lives, cannot fail to move us to inspire us, and to remind us of what we owe that great wartime generation now tragically dwindling to so few. It is our privilege to hear their testimony, but our role is not purely passive. It is our duty to ensure that we and future generations do not forget their service and their sacrifice in replacing tyranny with freedom. Our rights and the liberty won at such a terrible cost bring with them responsibilities to others in the exercise of that liberty. The Allied actions of that day ensured the forces of freedom secured first a toehold in Normandy, then liberated France, and ultimately the whole of Europe from the stranglehold of a brutal totalitarianism. So as we give thanks for all those who gave so much to win the victory, whose fruits we still enjoy to this day, let us once again commit ourselves always to remember, cherish, and honor those who served that day, and to live up to the freedom they died for by balancing the rights with civic responsibilities to our country. For we are all eternally in their debt. End quote. On Tuesday in Tokyo, Her Imperial Majesty, Empress Moscow of Japan, visited the Imperial Silk Farm at the Imperial Palace to feed mulberry leaves to silkworms. According to the Imperial Household Agency, this is the third time this year the Empress has fed the silkworms, which have grown, quote, three centimeters in size, end quote. In Madrid, His Majesty King Felipe VI of Spain presided over the presentation of the 42nd edition of the La Caixa Postgraduate Scholarships at the Caixa Forum. According to the Royal Court of Spain, the Fundación La Caixa Scholarship Program was established in 1982 and is a, quote, benchmark among the university community. Different aspects make it especially valuable for students. It is a program that offers the largest number of scholarships for postgraduate studies abroad. The scholarships are open to all study disciplines. The program covers the entire cost of tuition and a monthly stipend in the currency of the destination country. In addition, it covers travel expenses and orientation course, thanks to which students from each class have the opportunity to establish personal and academic ties with each other before joining their respective universities." End quote. 
This year, 100 scholarships were awarded to university students, enabling these exceptional students to pursue their studies at some of the top universities worldwide. Congratulations. In Copenhagen, Their Majesties, King Frederick X and Queen Mary of Denmark, accompanied by Her Majesty, Queen Margrethe of Denmark, and Her Royal Highness, Princess Benedicte of Denmark, attended a celebratory service at Hulmen's Church on the occasion of the 175th anniversary of the Danish Constitution. On June 5, 1849, King Frederick VII signed Denmark's first constitution at Klesensborg Schlott, thus forever changing the country's form of government from an absolute monarchy to a constitutional monarchy. Denmark now had its first parliament, and the separation of powers was introduced. However, only approximately 15% of the population was given the right to vote. Since 1849, the Danish constitution has been amended four times. On June 5, 1915, women were given the right to vote after, quote, more than 25 years of a political fight. In 1918, four women were elected to parliament and five were elected to the Landstinget. This made up 2.9% and 6.9% of the total number of members, respectively. In the Danish Constitution, citizens' rights include personal freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, and freedom of association. The Constitutional Act also grants all children the right to education, either in a public school, private school, or in their home. All healthy men also must do compulsory military service. End quote. As a constitutional monarchy, as described in Section 2 of the Danish Constitution, means that the sovereign's power is limited by the rules of the Constitutional Act. The sovereign has no independent power. Meanwhile, Ms. Lini Balaby, head of communications for the Royal Court of Denmark, announced that Their Majesties, King Frederick X, and Queen Mary of Denmark's visit to the Faroe Islands has been postponed. The reason for the postponement was due to strikes in the Faroe Islands. Quote, the royal couple expresses full understanding of the decision made by the Faroese layman, Axel V. Johannesson. Their majesties look forward to carrying out the planned program at a later date. End quote. The king and queen were due to arrive in the Faroe Islands aboard the Royal Yacht Denenbrog on June 12th for a two-day visit. A new date for the visit has yet to be set. On Tuesday, His Royal Highness, Crown Prince Haakon of Norway, presided over the annual inspection of His Majesty the King's Guard at Husby Camp in Oslo. According to the Royal Court of Norway, during the inspection, the Crown Prince presented the Garden's Watch and the Brigadier Leif Shansh's Certificate of Honor. Guardsman Edmund Anderson Gott received the Garden's Watch. The Garden's Watch is presented to conscripts who have particularly distinguished themselves in service. The Brigadier Leif Shansh's Certificate of Honor and Sabre was presented to Lieutenant Tomas Schellen. Last evening in Brussels, Their Majesties, King Philippe and Queen Mathilde of the Belgians hosted a dinner at Chateau de Lacun for 27 European Union public servants. According to the Royal Court of Belgium, each of the guests were under the age of 35 and the dinner was held in connection with the Belgian-European Union Presidency. And finally, in Muta, His Royal Highness, Crown Prince Al-Hussein bin Abdullah II of Jordan, 
deputizing for His Majesty the King, the Supreme Commander of the Jordan Armed Forces Arab Army, attended the graduation ceremony of the 33rd class of the Mutha University's military wing. According to the Royal Hashemite Court, during the ceremony, the president of Mutha University congratulated the students and noted that the graduation coincides with the national occasions of His Majesty King Abdullah II of Jordan's Silver Jubilee, the Great Arab Revolt Anniversary, and Army Day. That's it. I need some matzo ball soup. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for joining me this afternoon. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. I will be back tomorrow on Thursday, June 6th with all the latest world news and events. Until then, I sincerely wish each and every one of you a wonderful afternoon. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Comment below and click on the notification bell so you won't miss a new episode. Have a wonderful afternoon, everyone. And I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.